Hey everyone, everyone it's, it's me, me Francis, Francis Lucero, Lucero, your host of Attitude. Kay Bradshaw was once mocked and called the last girl to borrow from the library. Her response was similar to that of Dr. Schnipps. Yeah, yeah, put it in writing. Director of the Laboratory of Visual Learning from Boston University and MIT. Now with me to talk about books is Alvin Orloff from Dog Eared Books here in the Castro District. Welcome. Hey, <laughs> thanks for having me, Francis. Thanks. All right. I want to know a couple of things. Um, where did you find your love for books? Okay, well, I grew up in New Jersey, and if, have you ever been to New Jersey in the summer? Hot? It's really, <laughs> really, really, really hot, and there's lots of mosquitoes. Gotcha. And the local library was air-conditioned. My home was not. So I spent a lot of time at the, at the local library avoiding mosquitoes, bullies, and the heat, and it was really a delightful place to be, and I have never looked back. I love books. Oh, me I too. far, far <laughs> prefer them to reality. They're great. <laughs> Imagination is yes. fine. Um, ooh, speaking of books, what, is, what are your top three favorite books? I'm not a big reader of poetry, but Yoko Ono has a book of poetry called Grapefruit. Really? And it's full of instructions. It'll be like, cut a hole in the sky and mail it to your cousin. Just like these little instructions that don't quite seem possible or make sense. And they, they have this kind of soothing effect on your brain as you mm -hmm. read them. It's, you know, you sort of try to wrap your mind around what Yoko Ono is thinking and it can't be done and it's great. So that's a great book of poetry. For novels, I think Berlin Stories by Christopher Isherwood. Ooh, okay. Now maybe you've heard of the, the uh, either the musical or the movie Cabaret. Yes. It's based on Berlin Stories by Christopher oh. Isherwood. So it's you know the story of people, young people, sort of having a fling in Berlin just as the Nazis are taking over Germany. Gotcha. So their their youthful exuberance runs smack into this wall of insanity, and it's like this society. <laughs> teetering on the brink of madness yeah. and, um, and it's just beautifully written and uh, one of my favorites and now I'm going to do something just horrible I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed of myself but I'm going to plug one of my own books now I'm sorry well, I'm just going to do it author. I happen to be an author Ooh, so okay. my, my latest me. novel is called <laughs> Why Aren't You Smiling and it's about <laughs> a teenage boy in the 1970s who doesn't quite realize he's gay yet he's pretty young he's like uh -huh. 14 and he is seduced or not quite seduced almost seduced by a touring Christian, Christian uh, hippie evangelist who is actually going up and down the coast of California seducing young boys and that's based on a real historical person yeah. and um, so it's about this, uh, this one kid trying to find himself and then uh, coming into the contact of the, the crazy 1970s explosion of weird religion. And um, so that's Why Aren't You Smiling? And it's available at Dog Eared Books, believe it or not. Ooh, <laughs> fancy good recommendation. <laughs> Speaking of dog-eared books, why did you guys pick the Castro District to open up a bookstore? Well, you know, there wasn't going to be a store in the Castro. Uh, the Books, Inc. that was on um, Market Street was yeah. closed, very sadly. I remember that. And there used to be a great bookstore on uh, Castro itself called the Different Light Books. For you know, It was like a LGBT bookstore for like 20 some odd years, yeah. and they closed. And I think a neighborhood without a bookstore is really sad because you eat dinner and then what do you do? walk up and down the street, it's not, you know, you go to a bar, <laughs> you know, it's hard to talk in bars because they're loud, you know, yeah. you go to a bookstore and then you browse and then, this is just, I can't prove this, but the, my theory is that we have saved so many people from bad marriages because people go on dates and they go out to eat and then afterwards they go to the bookstore and the, uh, you know, one partner will say, there, hey, have you read this book? And you hold up the book and you find out if the yeah. person has really terrible taste. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it's a, a great way to, to really get to the bottom of what a person's character is like. That's so funny because I went on a date. Yeah. The bookstore is actually dog-eared bookstore uh -huh. as well. I remember that. It was very interesting seeing mm -hmm. where we two, where the both of us just like spend off. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All right. So before we continue on talking about books, um, have you seen this Pickleball Me? I have not. The little yellow minions. And I everything. haven't. I haven't. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, you have to watch it. It's my sister's absolute favorite movie. Okay. After falling short of stopping the last bad guy, Gru was fired from the anti-villain league. <laughs> now he is torn between his new Hi, self music. and his old villainous self. With the help of his twin brother and the minions, can he resolve his internal war of being the bad guy or the good guy? <laughs> Sounds like a knee slapper to me. I pull you. <laughs> All right, now back to books. Uh, it looks.
looks like you brought a couple of books to share. I did shall indeed. Shall we tell, shall we? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is a little book called Walking Through Clear Water in a Pool Painted Black. And Ooh. it's by Cookie Mueller. Now, have you have you heard of John Waters? You know, he does the film, the filmmaker. Yeah. She was in a lot of his early films, Cookie Mueller. She was in Desperate Living and Female Trouble. Yeah. So she was she was like an actress. She was from Baltimore, like John Waters was. And she was kind of a hippie vagabond during the 60s and early 70s. And she wrote this book of short stories, and they're just really fun, light stories that you know they'd be perfect for beach reading perfect for sitting under a tree and just wanting to read something that's going to take your mind off the crazy world outside yeah. um she's she's very dryly funny you can even see a picture of her here she's so looking, yeah exactly <laughs> she's she's very pretty but in a very tough baltimore kind yeah. of way you know she looks like she could you know she could stick you with a knife if she needed to <laughs> or she looks that way i'm sure she's too nice to was too nice to ever do that sadly she passed away many years ago from aids but um, she left behind this incredibly fun little uh, collection of stories. Ooh. I'm going to have to pick that up. You must. Ooh, and what? this is colorful. <laughs> this is a book, uh, a mon an artist's monograph um, from Kehinde Wiley, who is one of the most exciting artists, I think, that's currently working. Um, he is an American. Who, his father was Nigerian, but he's, he's an American. And his art, I'm going to hold some of it up for you, um, involves referencing like the old masters, the European old masters, yeah. like in, in pose and such. Oh, but then, awesome. he, but then, what he does is he uses like young African American men as the subject matter yeah. and puts them in these heroic poses that you're familiar with from you know your basic museum oh my gosh, that is so wandering. Cool. And then he puts these uh, gorgeous backgrounds that involve. Um, he takes elements from West African fabric art yeah. and from French Rococo and Islamic art and weaves them all together. So it's very, very multicultural and just incredibly beautiful, as you can see. And, and his use of color is just astounding. Oh and um, local angle, he went to the San Francisco Art Institute. Well, so there you go. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to flip through these while we take a short little break. Talk to you guys in a bit. Salon DNA is a one-stop place. Thank you to my family, my husband, and friends for the support. Salon DNA, 415-956-1909. And we're back. One last question. Okay. With the increase of technology, what do you think is gonna happen to books? I think people are gonna love them more than ever. Really? I think people's eyes get tired of looking at screens all day at work. I, read, I saw a study about that. Sure, absolutely. And you know what? They've also done studies about uh, retaining information for students. And students who read an Very actual true. book, they retain more than students who are reading on screens. And you know what? Small bookstores are the perfect place to meet books because you can talk to the you know, people who are working there, are eager to talk about them. And you can also talk to your fellow customers. People yeah. do this all the time make friends, you know? Can't do that online while you're <laughs> shopping, yeah. <laughs> all right, that's all I have for you guys. Thank you again for stopping by. Um, everyone, don't forget to grab a book and see you next week.